Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's video I want to talk about my personal 2022 investment strategy, mainly with crypto. I'm not going to talk about equities and retirement stuff I have in other accounts. Uh, crypto makes about 10 to 15 percent of my portfolio, portfolio overall. The rest I have retirement plans, index funds, uh, dividend reinvestment funds, stuff like that, dividend stocks, all that good stuff uh, that keep giving me giving me dividends every quarter, every month, and uh, get reinvested. But in this video, just want to talk about crypto. So what do I have as we look today, January 7th, Friday, 2022? We have a sea of red. The sea of red continues. Everyone said the bottom would be about 49.50. And this lesson should be for everybody that watches anyone on YouTube, gets any information from the internet. Do not believe what anyone says. Do your own research. You're taking the risk, it's your money. Do your own research. A lot of the guys on these YouTube channels I watch, I kind of get a kick out of, because they'll say, this is the trend line analysis and they bring up their trading view charts and they have all their little notations and lines and crap. Uh, it's, it's so silly. And they go, in the end, they're all predicting 100K Bitcoin. And then they're going, well, it could go down. Well, it could go sideways. Well, it could go up. And the best one is, it could go backwards. What does that mean? It's like these guys don't know, and they're, you know the channels that have millions of views, subscribers, and lots of viewers. It's, if you really sit down and listen to what they're saying, they're not saying anything. And the lesson there, you have a brain. You have cognitive thinking skills. Use your spidey sense. Don't listen to these guys. Don't act on them. If they say something of interest, go research it. Say, ah, no. I watched one guy today who has a million subs. And he was talking about DeFi. I don't know anything about DeFi. He's getting all this interest on his, um, oh God, I forgot what it was. The one stable coin, USDT. I didn't know anything about it, but I can see how people follow his lead. People want to be led. People want to be told what to do. I went and checked it out. I went, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm getting the same stuff, the same uh, rewards with uh, BlockFi and Voyager. So again, my whole point with these videos is do the research. This is for entertainment. Do not listen to anybody on the internet. I can't, I can't stress that enough. I mean, all joking aside, you just can't. Don't fall, don't fall for it because most of the time these videos are late, late to the market. And these people already made their trades or the, or the market's changed. And by the time you react, you're going you're gonna to react and buy or sell and you're going to be left holding the bag. Sometimes the best investment advice or the best strategy is to push your keyboard forward, stand up and go outside for a walk. Don't touch anything and just go, just take a walk, ignore it for a week and just don't react. Sometimes not touching your portfolio is the best thing you could do. And from my personal experience, yes, because I've often sold and then the next day or two, a thing doubles in price. Give me a break, right? So now I just hold until I can't hold anymore, right? And most times I just keep holding. I mean, I'm sure you can you can do quick trades and I just don't want to deal with that. I just want to buy and hold because I believe in this stuff. So having said that, what is my strategy? As we all look together in this beautiful sea of red, we are, I think we're going to drop below 40. I think the big players in the big club that you're not a member of are controlling the price to drop it down so they can buy more they can buy in and get their clients in. That's my hunch. Again, we're just little minions running around on <laughs> Bitcoin. These guys are buying millions and millions and millions worth of it, and they want it to come back down because they know it's got legs. They know it's going to go to the moon. So they're bringing the price down, and they're going to buy more and more and more and stack, stack, stack. That's my hunch. Just knowing how humans are, the way the world works. Uh, yeah, just that's, that's my prediction. It's going to take off, but people are now... Are forcing it down so they can get in and buy a bigger bigger heaps of this stuff so what am i going to do i don't sell i didn't sell again i told you when i did sell i sold 
back basic authentication token in the beginning of the year and I sold my ETH at 1300 because I didn't think it was going to go anywhere else because you just don't know. Hindsight is 2020. Oh, it's not going to go up any further. I got sick of holding it and dumped it. And then boom, it goes up to 4,000. I'm an idiot, right? So I learned I'm not selling my crypto unless I really need the money. Then I felt bad, well, well, or stupid. I'm holding this crypto. <clears throat> it's just sitting there in my, my hard wallet. This is, I don't know. I What is this doing for me? I want to get something out of this. Can I stake it? What can I do? Then I learned about BlockFi and I learned about Voyager. And uh, not so much Coinbase. Coinbase is a huge disappointment to me. I just think they were first to the trough. So people use them to get from fiat to crypto and vice versa. And that's all the good thing about Coinbase. I even bought the Coinbase stock when I went public. What a joke that was. And I think I lost a few hundred bucks when it kind of inched back up a few months ago, back in October, November. I dumped it as fast as I could. I took a couple hundred dollars loss and said, I'm out. I'm out. I don't believe in this, this uh, platform, this exchange anymore. So then I found out about an exchange. I mean, I found out about, out about BlockFi. I found out about Voyager. What about them? Both started to pay interest on the crypto held on, on their exchanges, on their on whatever, on their sites. And I said, oh, this is interesting. And meanwhile, I have money in a money market making 0%. You know, it's like a lot of money going, I'm losing money sitting here because the, you know, the new government in charge is destroying the country and the inflation is going through the roof and they're fudging the numbers and you just don't know what to believe anymore. So money in fiat right now, you're losing money every second. I said, I need to do something about this. So with Voyager and BlockFi, so with Voyager mainly, I put it into um, USDC stablecoin um, and moved it over there. And let me see what's going on with that. Uh, let's see if I go. I have the app on my phone and there's a BlockFi app. BlockFi also has a desktop app. Yeah, so I moved Fiat over to Voyager into USDC coin, a stable coin. Uh, and that is giving me, let me see here. Try to get, make sure I get the percentages right for you guys. I am getting paid 9% plus a booster because I own the Voyager token, they give me a 0.5% booster. So my money now in USDC stablecoin is getting 9.5%. Compare that, to, compare that to the money market where I was getting 0.000000%. Uh, it's a win. So my strategy has been for 2021 is to hold, after I sold and stuff went up. I got so mad at myself for selling. I said, that's it. I got to get smarter here and think and be patient. So I moved a lot of money over to um, Voyager and BlockFi and just to get that 9.5% on my USDC. Also, I moved my Bitcoin over, my Litecoin, my BAT. I, I kind of split it between the two. Then BlockFi came out and says, well, if you have this much Bitcoin over this amount, we're not going to pay you that nice interest rate every month. I said, what? So I said, all right, I didn't like the looks of that. I pulled that most of the money out of most of the coin out of Bitcoin out of Unblockfi, um, and I moved it to Voyager. So Voyager has been solid. They've been a performer. I've been getting rewards every month, interest plus the bonus, pretty decent amount each month. And what I do, I roll it back in. It compounds it. I get paid out in Bitcoin for Bitcoin, Litecoin for Lite, Litecoin, a uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, BAT, Voyager, and that reward each month, I use and I buy more of the same. So it just compounds. Compounding is the uh, secret of life, right? So BlockFi, what I did as well, I was purchasing stuff for my business. So I got their BlockFi crypto visa card. Basically what that is, as you buy, you get 1.5 or 2%, I think 1.5, I can't remember what it was, 1.5 percent rewards but it gets paid out in bitcoin i said okay why not the more bitcoin the better i want to start stacking satoshis baby i want to stack i want to get more than i have now i said all right let's do that so i have that in block five uh, i still have a couple bucks in coinbase which is a joke uh they don't pay you anything it's just sitting there wasting away i have some stuff in the coinbase wallet the problem is there to move that crap back and forth if it's on the Ethereum network, I don't have enough to cover the freaking transfer back and forth. So it's just sitting there. It's like, what do I do? That I see the point of Ethereum. I get it. You can make money, but to move 
Ethereum back and forth is a freaking joke and it's a turnoff. And it just, I can't move stuff. I don't want to put more ETH in just to move my stuff from my wallet to another wallet. And it's just very annoying. It's very frustrating. And I think, again, like I always say, the normies that are getting into crypto are going to be turned off by that and say, wait, I have $100 of this Ethereum token in this wallet. It's going to cost me 90 Ethereum, US dollars, whatever, to get it moved to my other wallet. Forget this crap. That's, I know, prove me wrong, right? And in mining, it's the same way. When you move it out of ethermine.org, you set your gas level, and I set it at the lowest, and it never moved for like two months. Then I inched it up to maybe 50, and I finally, finally dropped, and I was able to get my money out and get it into my wallet and start earning interest. So what is my strategy to hold? I don't sell. I would like to start selling if the prices were higher and pay off some of this equipment. But uh, right now, it's just going to be a hold, and we're down at 41.7 right now. If you look at the screen, and uh, I'm just going to hold, and with my BlockFi, here is BlockFi. Go check it out, BlockFi.com. You can get their uh, Visa card, credit cards right here. I recommend that. 1.5% uh, back in Bitcoin on every purchase with the BlockFi rewards. I am an affiliate. I'll put a link below. You you get a you get a treat. I get a treat when you sign up and get the card or make a deposit or buy something. You can read about it. We all win. They they set it up pretty nice. No annual fee also on the Visa card. And I get paid in Bitcoin every month on rewards. So I was buying a lot of equipment with uh, my crypto equipment with this card and getting um, rewards in Bitcoin back or my GPU purchases and you know all the stuff I use to mine. Pretty cool. All right, let's go over here. So that's BlockFi. I recommend looking into it. Check it out and diversify. I always put it across multiple things. Don't put it all in one basket. So this having said that, let's go over to Voyager. Where is Voyager? Voyager. So Voyager is sweet. I think it's a, it's a hidden gem that I learned about. And uh, like I said, you they have a great reward system. And they now have just started with a debit card. I don't like debit cards. I just stay away from debit cards for a reason. Here's the earn program. You can earn up to 12%. It's a sweet deal. Uh, if you own their Voyager token, at least 500, you get a thing called a booster, which is 0.5% on top of their basic uh, interest rewards. Here's the rewards. Let's see. Let's see what it says here. Just go to their site. It's rewards.investor. I'm oh, sorry rewards.investvoyager.com. I think the main site is investvoyager.com. Make sure you're going to the right site, investvoyager.com. Let's go back to the rewards. If I knew how to click, here we go, earn program. And this is what I am in. You can see some of the interests I get. So I get 4.75% on my Bitcoin. I get 3% on my Litecoin, 4.25% on the Ethereum I mine because I put I cash out of the pool and I put my Ethereum and my Bitcoin into wallets, either BlockFi or Voyager, and then I get 4.25%. And uh, But remember, since I own the Voyager token, I get that booster 0.5%. So you add 0.5% to this kablamo 5.25, right? Did I do that right? I went to public school, so public math, not easy for me. <laughs> uh, so Litecoin, I get, I get every month. Uh, I have to... Um, I don't have doggy coin in this on this app, so I don't get any there. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? Uh, bat, I have bat, I get 1% of my bat. And there's the minimum over here, over here on the right column. You get, you need to make sure you get those rewards those each month. And here's the December, and they will fluctuate, but not as bad as BlockFi's did. BlockFi limited the amount of percentage you get based on the quantity you have. The more you had, the less you got. I said, screw that, I'm out, I want a Voyager. I leave my credit card. Whoops! I leave my credit card um, uh, rewards in there, so it's a few bucks, not much. And I earn, re I earn interest on that uh, Bitcoin rewards from my credit card in BlockFi. So it's pretty cool. Check it out. That's my strategy right now. If the market goes up, because I mined Ethereum at a lot higher price than this. And for tax purposes, and now that's your self-employment tax income you made. And I was going to do a video on tax stuff I got from my CPA. I'd go over that. I might do that tomorrow. It's, it's, it's a lot of energy, and it's exhausting, that whole tax stuff. 
And remember, it's just the boogeyman. Don't don't let the tax guy scare you. Just report what you have. Set up, you know, use CoinTracking.info or something like that. Import all your wallet transactions and all as best you can. Come on, as long as you're just reporting this stuff and not hiding anything, you're good to go. And and most of those sites, like Coinly and um, Coin Tracking Info and all that stuff, will take care of your schedules and tax stuff for you. You got to double check because sometimes you know you got to make sure the quantities are right. Always double check, double check, double check. Trust but verify. All right, we're holding at 41941. So the strategy for my crypto is to keep mining, mining Ethereum right now, and I'm mining CPU mining. I'm back to Raptorium because the price is going up. Let's go back to that. Here's Raptorium. Yeah, the price went up. So I said, yeah, let me jump back on that bandwagon for a minute because I was on Avion, which was Ravencoin Lite. And the thing tanked. I'm like, what is going on here? That's not a good sign. I didn't like what was going on. I don't know. I did get a good warm fuzzy about the Ravencoin Lite, so I hopped off that. And I was also on Monero Ocean. And I did kind of like that. I don't know if that's it. Is that it? No, that's two miners. So here are two miners. I got off nice hash. That's it. I got off nice hash. This is GPU mining. I have my two laptops. And I said, oh, I'm going to put these on two miners to see how it does. I pulled them off nice hash because I thought the you know, nice hash got rid of the fee transfer, the free transfer from the nice hash wallet, Bitcoin to Coinbase. That's gone. I said, ah, right. I'm out. I don't care. I want free. I like free. I said, let me just go try two miners because like right here, Ethereum miners could now, could now get payouts in Bitcoin and Nano with no fees and no delays. I said, that's me, no fees. My middle name is No Fees Jim, right? I don't know what that means. Uh, but I said, let me try this. Yeah, I'll make a couple bucks. Look, I'm up to 23 bucks. Woohoo! But 23 bucks is 23 bucks, right? And I'm mining about what? 63 mega hash. So it's mining ETH hash but I'm gonna get paid out in Bitcoin without paying that horrible, horrible ETH gas fee. So that's one of my strategies. So just still mining ETH hash until I can't mine it anymore and stacking ETH and Bitcoin. So here I'm getting Bitcoin and on Ether mine, I'm obviously getting ETH, Ethereum and paying that out to my wallet and then getting interest on it. So strategy being, I'm just gonna hold, ride this little storm out I do have some fiat I may buy in each week, dollar cost average, in, which I am doing in small amounts, but I just may plop a little more down because I feel we are at a major dip. And if you want to win in life, you buy when everyone else is afraid. You know, when there's fear in the streets, you start buying because everyone else is selling or freaking out. So I don't know. That's my thought process. Uh, if this goes back up, if Ethereum goes up back, uh, back up above four or even gets to five, I will maybe start taking profits to help. Ah, uh, will I? I hate short-term capital gains. I, 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 I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Maybe just hold it for a year, get over that long-term mark, so you're only pay, you're paying less in gains than you would for short-term. So, depending on if you need the money or not, that's the question. And right now I don't, so I think I might just let it ride. Strategy is long-term hold everything and keep stacking coins as best I can on the resources I have. The CPU mining, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm stacking Raptorium and I don't think I have it. I don't have the wallet up. Crap, I was going to show you the wallet. Here it is. So I'm mining on 011 data pull. The only bad thing I don't like about this, I mean, sure, it's a, it's not as slick as slot pool, but I still can't figure out how to set my minimum payout. I don't want to get paying. 50 payments a day at 20 RTMs. You know, I just I just want to get one a week. Because again, just for transactions and tracking, getting all these transactions is very annoying. Even though I can upload them to uh, cointracking.info, it's just, again, it's a lot of transactions to manage. Uh, I would just like to, you know, set it high, like on Flockpool, so they give me a thousand, and then I just get it at a thousand RTM every week or whatever, whatever I make. So that's my only complaint with 011 data, but otherwise things are okay. Uh, let's go back over here. Avian Raptorium. 
So as this is going on with, Rat with Raptorium, I want to find out what other coins I can mine because I'm going to have four full Ryzen 9s and 900s. I got a refurbished one from Amazon. I did a video on that. Be careful of that if it's renewed because it's going to be missing parts. And worse, it was installed on a motherboard because the thermal paste had been wiped off and there's some marks on it and everything. And a few pins were bent on the actual CPU, so I straightened those out. But now I have to wait for the thermal paste and add 12, 13 bucks to the cost of the renewed thing. I'm thinking, eh, just buy new from now on. It, the cost difference wasn't worth, wasn't worth the juice wasn't worth the squeeze, right? So lesson learned there. Oh, what else is going on? There's a lot of news out there. There's my stuff. There's my wallet if you want to send me some Ethereum. I got six workers running. I'm holding about, yeah, sometimes it goes up to one giga hash. I moved those two laptops over to two miners. So if I move those back to Ethermine, I'd be at one giga hash, which is a sweet number. Uh, ideally, I'd like to get to two giga hash, but I think I want to hold right now and see where it goes. All right, that is all I got. Thanks for watching. And let me know what you guys think, what your strategy is, and I'll talk to you later.